we're going to be learning about natural logs and exponential functions. So first of all, it helps maybe to introduce this. There's another topic uh, where we go into more detail about exponential functions, but it helps to, to bring it up here as well. So let me just explain what this exponential function even is. I mean, a function is something that goes like f of x, right? So it goes like this. This is the exponential function. It's called e to the x. I don't mean e as in like in physics or chemistry, you know, when you have the charge of an electron. I don't mean that. I mean, it's an actual function. It's a graph, so to speak, that does something. Uh, this is really important. So actually, maybe, you know, maybe I'll show you the graph. Hold on. Let me bring up uh, like this. I'll go new graph. Let me show you this function. Look, do you see it's right here? It's e to the x. So I'll do e to the power of x, and I'll say enter. This is the function here. Now, uh, it's got some special features to it. I mean, first of all, yes, it's an exponential graph. You know, when people talk about, oh, this thing rises exponentially. Well, this is, this is an exponential graph. This is actually called the exponential function, in fact. It's got some very special features in calculus. It's got something kind of magic. It is its own derivative, which is kind of crazy, like the y value uh, of it equals what the gradient is at that point. It's kind of crazy. Uh, so I think it's really neat from calculus. But as far as what we can do with this, I mean, it's got something special that at x equals 0, it's 1. Let me show it to you by doing trace, I guess. I'll do trace. I'll go, uh, I'll go at, uh, give me at 0, it's 1. And actually, what's interesting, at 1, it's 2.72. See that one right there? So actually, in fact, let me just take a screenshot of this. Hold on a second here. Let me take a button here. I'll do a screenshot. Set to 4. Do a screenshot of this thing right here. That. There we go. And I'll just see if this is going to work. So let me just uh, try to do this. Sorry, you have to bear with me. Yeah, there we go. That worked. So this here is my little function here, which is actually kind of nice. So I can actually see what it does. So there's a few interesting features for it. One of them is that, uh, well, we have that e to the 0. Hopefully this will make sense. Anything to the power of 0 should be 1. Notice that? So that's why at 0 here it was at 1. That was that point right there. But what's interesting is that e to the 1, maybe I'll do it in a different color here, but do it in like purple. e to the 1 though, let's see what that was. Remember e to the 1 was something like 2.72? It's not quite. In fact, it's like 2. Point, was it 7, 1, 8, 2, 8? I don't remember the rest of the numbers. It's something that's irrational. Do you remember what it means to be irrational? It means you cannot write it as a fraction. It means it's a number that is a decimal, it goes on forever, never has a pattern, never repeats. It's like pi. Uh, okay, so it's irrational. So this is, it's an important function. Now we have something that we call a natural logarithm. Some people call it natural log for short, right? Instead of logarithm, we say logs. And this is a really important thing here, is that it is uh, log base e. That's what this is. If something has a log base e, okay, so I'll say, so a natural log, and we normally write it like this, actually, just wait, let me say it like this. We normally write it like this, natural log, ln. I mean, in French, at least it works better because ln is a logarithme naturel, so it's like a, an ln, because otherwise, why, would it, why wouldn't it be nl? Well, it's because it's not from English. So it's so a natural logarithm, we call ln. That's for short, okay, so ln. Uh, natural log is just equal to um, log with a base of e. This is what it is, okay? So this is why we call it natural log. So natural log is just a log base e. That's why, you can see this really stupid meme, but it makes me laugh so much. Log base e, then forever alone, get it? Oh, yeah. So here we go, a nice little pro tip as well, if you want to undo things, you know how a square undoes a square root, and now we learned that you know log undoes 10 to the x, well, natural log undoes e. So if ever you have an equation, you want to get rid of an ln, take e to the power of. Or in an equation, you want to get rid of the e, you do ln, so they undo each other. That's a really important one. So let's actually use this and do stuff with it. Uh, well. Oh, by the way, I was thinking about irrational numbers. That's why I like this one, because square root of negative 1 is also an irrational number. Actually, no, it's uh, not irrational. It's actually non-real. Uh, it's a called i, by the way. If you're in SL, we don't worry about it. HL, you definitely will worry about this one. So this is called square root of negative 1. It's actually called i. So look, this is i. Do you know what 2 to the 3 is? It's 8. 
Sigma means sum. Get it? So I ate some pie. Mm. Oh, I hate myself. Okay, so if we do this one right here, the rules of natural logs are the same as the rules for logs. So that means that, do you remember these different rules for logs at least? Logs, if we have log of A times B, it's the same thing as saying log of A plus the log of B, except this time we just call it natural log instead. So that rule holds true. This isn't on your formula booklet, but we use the same, so I'll say same as log. And why is it the same as logs? Well, because it is a log, remember. Remember, natural log is just log base E. So that means you know, it should hold true. Whatever logs do, natural log should also do. So natural log of A over B is the same thing as saying natural log of A minus natural log of B. And just like this weird one with the exponents right here, this little exponent can come right in front. We can make it X natural log of A. So these still hold true. We can even do change of base as well. So we can say, for example, um, well, I mean, we can actually use this, this idea, right? We can say, hey, look at this. We can say the, um, I'm trying to think how best to say it. We can say log base. Yeah, let me just remind you of it, actually. So log base B of X over log base B of A. Right, this change of base rule over here, this is the one that you get. Well, we can actually use this for natural logs. So, for example, um, we can always make things, for example, we can always make things log base E, can't we? Over log base E. That we could, of course, do, right? We could always make it just log base E. Well, that means we can make it natural log of X over natural log of A. So just so, I just wanted you to see that you can also use these. So this doesn't necessarily solve this thing here, but I'm just trying to show you, you could, if you wanted to, you know, change this base then. You can make them both, I'll just show you all the steps again. You can make them both log of E, log base E, I mean. And this, remember this seven is on top, this four is on the bottom. And if you're not sure, you look this up in your formula booklet because this one is there. But remember, that's the same thing as saying the natural log of seven over natural log of four, in case that helps you. It doesn't always help. I mean, this, I haven't really done anything really useful here, but I mean, I'm just trying to show you how you could make them natural logs just cuz. Okay, so that's using change of base. Let's actually see then if we can solve something for real now. So for reals, we're gonna try to solve for x exactly. We're gonna do this without a calculator. So if we wanna do e to the x equals 12, one way to do it just to say, well, let's see, I gotta think this is e to the x. I wanna undo an e. Do you remember what undoes e? Natural log does. So I'll take natural log of both sides. So I'll say, all right, so ln of e to the x, and I have to do it to both sides, so it's ln of 12. Well, let's see now. Remember I said natural logs, they undo each other, natural log and e undoes each other, so that way the x sort of plops down. So that goes x equals natural log of 12, and believe it or not, that's it. You're done. That's how easy it was. Now that's the exact value. You could approximate it if you wanted to. I mean, uh, so that was, how is this? Maybe I'll say that was doing it exactly. Right? This was the exact method. You could do it with a calculator and actually graph it. I mean, you could, in theory, I guess. You could sit there and do the graph of, you know, this is uh, y, this is x, and you do the graph of natural, um, do the graph of e to the x. Remember that graph went something like this, like that? And you could find out where that one meets the line, so that's uh, e to the x. You could say, where does that one meet the line, you know, 12? And see that where they meet. I don't know why I'm writing so crooked. I realize I'm sort of Oh, well, and you can actually find the x value here. Let's see what that is. I bet it's natural log of 12. In fact, hold on. I just had my graph. Maybe I can do it right here. Let me also, I'll do tab, and I'll say 12. All right, well, I can't see it. i got to zoom up probably. Yeah, there it is. Okay, good. So here it is. I've just done this. Let's find the intersection. So I go analyze. I say intersection. And I say do it there, please. And look, do you see it's x equals 2.48 roughly? All right, so I'll say that. So x equals 2.48. Let me see what natural log of 12 is. I hope it is. I hope this works. Uh, so natural log of 12. Let's see what that is. So natural log is right up here. So I do control there. So natural log of 12. Oh, phew. So this is 2.48491. So, so. so do you see how we can do this? This was the exact value. It's roughly, I should say, so it's approximately 2.48. So do you see how we can start working with these things? So when might you actually use this stuff? Well, 
just like for logarithms, uh, how they're related, uh, we see them in everyday life. Well, natural logarithms are just related to logs. So anywhere you see them, you see them. So wherever you saw logs, you see natural logs. I tried to think though of other places where you might see them. So for example, bacteria growth and decay. Uh, I found some things in biology where they're using these expressions. We've got radioactivity as well. So things like, um, like in physics, if we have the amount of you know atoms left or the amount of mass left in something that's radioactive, it turns out the amount left is related to the amount you start with. So this could be the mass or the number of atoms, whatever, e to the minus lambda t, where this is some sort of time here. And it turns out sometimes we actually wanna solve for uh, lambda up here. Um, so be, to do that, we actually take a natural log in order to do it. So for physicists, you might know that, you know, the half-life is actually related to a natural log and um, this decay constant. Turns out it's actually a natural log of, uh, is it uh, ln2, if I remember correctly. We've also got exponential graphs, right? So lots of these things are here where you see these exponential graphs. You see a lot of those actually relating to, for example, uh, you know, coronavirus, uh, that's something that hits everyone in the world, of course. So that's something very important to, to discuss. And there's a lot of exponential graphs for these things, right? Uh, rates can go up exponentially or down exponentially and so on. But So these, these do have a lot of effects to us in our everyday lives.